SMGs are the fast firing, often less powerful set of weapons in Cyberpunk 2077. With a wide range of models to choose from, including some of the strangest and most creatively interesting guns in the entire game. I looked at them all so you don't have to, and this video will show you how to get them, top tips for using each, as well as which of course are best. This has been one of my favourite lists to do, so let's get to it. The build I used for SMGs was switched up a bit depending on the gun at hand, but generally was specced into 20 reflexes, buying up air dash and of course SMG perks, including the top tier submachine fun. Body had health regen perks as usual for better close range survival, then tech had cyberware buffs as well as healing items and sometimes pyromania. Though I switched that out for bolt shots when using the Senko LX, or in intelligence the smart gun perks for the various smart weapons. There's also a couple guns optimised for stealth, in which case you'll instead want this low level cool tree and possibly crouch sprints if you can afford it. As for cyberware, it's very similar to the assault rifle build. Chrome compressor based but with Karenzakov for slow-mo accuracy when we need it. Visual cortex for more crits, shock absorber or better still immovable force as SMGs aren't always the most precise, auto healing and heal on kill, chitin for more regen and either pain deucer or optical camo depending on if you're playing stealthy. After that, try to fill every slot as that'll reduce our cooldowns by 15% when we also have the cyborg perk. With that out of the way though, it's onto a set of weapons that can differ pretty wildly. At the bottom for me, the DS1 Pulsar strikes an okay balance of both speed and damage, firing slightly slower than the other power SMGs, which itself isn't such a bad thing when you factor in a little more ammo conservation. After all, with how easy it is to drain these, less shots for a takedown is welcome indeed. Described canonically as a somewhat failed experiment of Dara Polytechnics though, with reduced handling capabilities. What I would say about that on testing it myself though, is that the recoil actually isn't terrible, but bullets spread, whether aiming or firing from the hip, can be fairly chaotic. Even with immovable force cyberware, things can get pretty out of hand, and this is merely accentuated in actual ranged combats with bullets flying everywhere. Fortunately, the focus fire mod can somewhat reduce this, whilst a combo of ready steady, the mind over matter perk, and the right cyberware can also help with ADS fire, making this ammo hungry spray and pray gun into something closer to a beam rifle and further capitalizing on the 100% headshot multiplier. Though even with all that, it's still not quite perfect, feeling even now a little like an untamed beast, and there are SMGs with better beam rifle potential than this. So why not lean here into the high damage chaos factor with say pyro or firecracker, or get two of these models, equip both with big mag and the submachine fun perk, and just switch to and fro, never having to reload. There's so many possibilities here, as there are with most of the SMGs, and this one is a fairly common drop or weapon vendor spawn. I found one both at Marty Jenklo's fuel station or over in Arroyo. Kangtao's G58 Dian is what I'd call the speedy smart SMG. Shooting at the same speed as a pulsar or guillotine, only of course this time with smart targeting, often head seeking bullets. Sounds good, and it is. I'd imagine the hit ratio is certainly higher with this than a gun we have to aim, but it still really doesn't help itself in conserving ammo. See, sadly, the Dian is one of, if not the weakest gun on the list. Great for mowing base level foes down, but taking a very long time on the stronger ones. Obviously, the multi-targeting system as well means shots will often be split across everyone in the targeting square. Good for splash damage, yes, but consider the fact that everyone is being left alive for longer, and it's not so good for us, who are far more likely to die even dashing around to mitigate damage than we are by selectively targeting one enemy at a time, or indeed just using a stronger smart SMG. Although, there's still something to be said about the fact that Trauma Team use these guns, and I think I can can see why there. Due to often being deployed in hot zones and just having to fire away whilst also focusing on a casualty. Compared to the other smart guns on this list, this is the most spray and pray one, only in this case of course our prayers are answered, after about 1.15 seconds, only without as much punch as they otherwise could be. And firing as target locks change can also result in several missed shots, a problem not so prevalent with slower firing weapons. Anyway, if you still want to use it but there's a better iconic variant coming up, you can buy the base variant of this one from the Glen. 
Fenrir in 2.0 then. Hmm. I mean, thematically, I can appreciate the change, with the gun more functioning as the literal bane of Maelstrom, but I don't know, I kind of miss the blazing inferno of fire and death, you know? I mean, sure, we can make a regular gun that now with a simple pyro mod, but still, I do miss it on Fenrir a bit. Mind you, the new version isn't the worst thing in the world, instead focused into doing electrical damage, as well as having a chance to upload cyberware malfunction to an enemy. As it is supposed to be Maelstrom's bane then, I figured who better to test it on than literal chromed up borks, though they didn't seem all too fast by the intrusion on their circuitry, continuing the fight at normal. In fact, overall, of all the quick hacks a gun could administer, it could do a lot better than cyberware malfunction. I mean, there's short circuit, which to be fair we can get in many forms, overheat, which also we can get in many forms, contagion, contagion, that would be a good one. I mean, cyberware malfunction can be useful on certain enemies with powerful cyberware, sandy users for instance, and it does increase our subsequent damage to an enemy but compared to the mods we can add to a regular Saratoga now, it just doesn't hold up into the later game. Fortunately, it's acquired for free during the Sacrum Profanum side quest up in the north side docks, and to be fair, it's still an SMG well worth using until you get a better basic one and some good mods. The most standard feeling spray and pray power SMG I would say would be the Saratoga. By far not the strongest gun of this game, but by all accounts one of the speediest, unloading an entire 40 round mag in just over 3 seconds. Factor out reloading and you can fully use up all ammo in a little over a minute, so hopefully you find some more during that. As standard power SMGs go though, this one is technically one of the highest quality, looking like a futuristic successor to the MP5 and feeling like one. Too. Saratoga comes with a decent handling out the box, and we can see this with the reduced recoil and circle of spread compared to the other power weapons, still demanding your accuracy but more rewarding to those who can shoot straight. Plus, there's so many of these about the place, it's all too easy to acquire multiple to switch between them with the submachine fun perk. Personally, I took one regular modded with focus fire and ready steady, turning it into a beam rifle alongside the more powerful but slightly slower Barghest variants. With a reduced ammo capacity of just 30 though, meaning it'll be emptied even quicker. Still a better variant though, I would argue, especially with something like Pyro or Firecracker, but a bit more annoying on those frequent reloads. A specific place to get all of these is Dogtown Stadium. Sophia sells the regular crafting spec, whilst Herald normally stocks Barghest guns. And I would say, with the right mods, the potential insane accuracy of these versions would beat the Fenrir in 2.0 now. Arasaka's Shinjen Smart Gun, a triple burst fire weapon similar to the Yukimura pistol, but obviously this time working off of SMG perks and their available mods. Described as a high quality homage to Japan's love of miniatures and the dream weapon of any soldier or mercenary. Not gonna lie, at first I didn't see it, standing there firing slowly having to click over and over again when there's plenty of other entries to manage the job quicker, but then I realised there's a far more optimum way to use this which especially benefits from the level 20 tailwind perk from reflexes. See, with this thing's tool targeting square, it's particularly excellent at holding enemies in its sights, with the smart targeting taking the edge off and allowing us to dash around with insane speed in a way we just couldn't pull off so well with power weapons, still landing perfect headshots whilst also gaining every dash based mitigation buff. Like a Sandeviston ghost, only we don't even need the Sandeviston, which would inevitably just slow down our fire rate. Even the gun's burst fire works perfectly with this method, adding natural breaks to keep dashing and continually keep people in our line of sight. It can even down a few max hack members before running out of ammo. Ammunition is still an issue with this gun, but a smaller one, which can, when appropriate, be solved by just getting in a car. So as a smart gun, Headhopper is a fantastic choice of mod, especially with my dashing method, whilst Big Mag just reduces our need to reload or switch quite as much. In the more tightly packed environments though, I'd probably opt for a different weapon. But you can buy the crafting spec for this one from the downtown weapon vendor. Arasaka's Shigure is another of those older guns still around in the game up alongside its direct successor, similar to the Tameyura pistol or Nawaki assault rifle. But rather than a higher damage, less modernized build, Shigure is a little weaker than the Saratoga, but also faster. The fastest, non-iconic in fact, and also importantly, having an increased mag capacity of 50, resulting in yes, a larger recoil arc, but initial shots are fairly well packed together, and in practice against enemies, 
I felt the range of this one was actually pretty decent, beaming people from across the way with relative precision and the increased speed allowing me to get more shots off after activating Karenzikov. That bonus 10 rounds as well, opposed to the regular 40, doesn't seem like much, but oftentimes was just what was needed to fully drain a health bar before switching or reloading. And with a big mag mod, this could even be increased to a huge 77 rounds. Reloading this by the way, not quicker than switching quite, but still very slick, and if you don't have the submachine fun perk with this, or a different SMG to switch to, it's really not much of a problem. And given the hyper rate of fire, a great mod I found actually was the Chimera Core Firecracker, turning every bullet explosive and dealing splash damage to everyone nearish to the target. It's a speedy and underrated moddable gun overall. Not too common, but I bought mine from the Arroyo weapon vendor. Though SMGs across the board do have an ammo problem, and this is arguably one of the worst offenders. Take for example even my high powered build versus MaxTac. One mag would drain about 20% of the health bar, so 250 accurate rounds to fully defeat one of them. Considering this ammo type is capped at 1k then, you'll have to either pick your fights in places you'll know there'll be plenty more ammo to loot, or a car to jump into, or pack this into a build with assault rifles or something else that uses different ammo, or no ammo at all. What do you get when you cross a private defense megacorp with a designer fashion brand? Well, obviously, you get a sleek looking gun that won't ruin your outfits, and also the only tech SMG model. Senko LX will actually require a visit to Jinguji clothing store in order to buy. The fashion brand in question who collabed on it. Being an SMG though, and tech weapons being guns that need to charge, this one has an interesting mode of fire. Simple hip fire is a small, instantaneous burst, good for the occasional finisher shots, but that does doesn't penetrate walls, at least not this model. But where this weapon truly shines is in its ADS fire, which after a little charge releases an insane flurry of automatic shots, which have some vertical recoil but zero bullet spread. It's probably the most accurate SMG not to have smart targeting or accuracy increasing mods. Plus if walls have a tendency to get in your way, then well, they're not so much anymore. Now you might think, given the hold to fire nature of this weapon, that the often release early to fire bolt shots would be off the table here, but actually not at all, and you definitely want to spec into as many of those perks as you can if using this gun, including the top tier chain lightning. They don't fire 100% of the time, but provided you're not shooting through cover first, then more often than not, you'll be seeing a shower of electrical blue bolts. So overall, very effective, very accurate, with a ton of damage. The only drawbacks really are needing to aim down the sights, or the fact we have to charge it up first. You can't use this quite as mindlessly as many of the others, but you can slap on the Chimera Wall Puncher mod to effectively double its damage, just like that. And then you can even take it in vehicles for just continual bouts of burst fire. The Shinjin Mark V prototype is now just about a slightly better variant of the Shinjin, but partly just beats it on the cooler, more chic design, and the fact it can be found pretty easily and totally free. Coming into the Arasaka Industrial Park in Santo Domingo, for the containers at the back, it'll be kept in a little hidden ammo crate here. There's also an email inside the compound explaining its origins, and it was apparently sent as a gift from the brother of one of the Saka guardsmen here. Snuck into this container, arriving from somewhere in Iraq, I think. Statistically identical to the regular gun, save for two pretty useful things. The ability to target three enemies at once, and a 30% burn chance. And yes, we could technically achieve the same effects on the base gun with a head hopper or two pyro mods, but we don't have three mod slots anymore, so we can never quite get on the Mark V's power level. The targeting system is also landscape this time to account for those multiple targets, but other than that, it's pretty much the same merits as the regular Shinja. Perfect for darting around and mindlessly firing and such. One of the new gun types added in Phantom Liberty was the Barghest manufactured smart gun called Warden, with Barghest and regular versions both buyable at the stadium vendors. Interesting, considering it's a Barghest weapon entirely, though in fairness, not a tremendous amount of difference between them. The quote unquote Barghest version deals some more base damage to the compromise of being limited to a pretty close range gun. Now, overall, I would say, at least when it comes to base versions, that this is the best smart SMG, striking the perfect 
perfect balance of effective AoE damage or quickly downing one foe when need be. This all comes down to the fact that fire rate continuously increases as we unload the mag, which is perfect as an initial imperfect lock wastes less ammo, and by the time we're fully honed in, we're firing the majority of the bullets for majority of the damage. I'd recommend the Hakatomi Chimera mod on this gun above the others, as the chance to proc it just seems a lot higher, possibly because each shot is actually a ton of mini projectiles, and maybe each of them have the 5% chance, but it's a fantastic combo all the same. Combine it with the heal on kill cyberware as well, as like I said, it's a master at dropping crowds of enemies quickly, though not feeling weak like the DN, possibly due to that satisfying fire rate increase. Overall, it proves once again that whilst Barghast engineering may be crude, it actually gets the job done really well in practice. So good job to Murphy or whoever designed this in the canon. Whilst the Budget Arms Guillotine literally has budget in the name, it is, in practice, a highly underrated gun, I think. Certainly not as classy as the Saratoga or Shigure in the canon, and hipfire bullet spread before mods can be a bit of a pain. But with the actually semi-decent built-in scope, our circle of accuracy is surprisingly good. And with 45 rounds in the magazine as well, it's even a little less of an endless reload fest than the Saratoga. A little less, not much, with damage slightly lower than the other budget SMG, the Pulsar, though exceeding it in its ability to beam people. Plus, there's an easy to acquire crafting spec at Robert Wilson's by our apartment, so you can craft as many as you want or need and then switch between them. There's all kinds of brilliant combinations, including of course Focus Fire and Ready Steady to make your aim look like this, though the model I would reserve for that is the free, very special, and even more accurate XMod2 variant. Acquired up here in Longshore Stacks, and if you can't pass the body check to get get through the door, then just grab it by shooting through this window and sort of looking in the right place. And this one has superior stats all round, save for when it comes to range. So I'd use this for slightly closer beaming and switch to the standard one for anybody further away. In terms of destroying max tack though, that's again gonna work at about 20% health per mag. So still a bit of an issue there, and you'll want to keep in reserve a heavy or melee weapon, or if not, then just a projectile arm launcher even. In terms of fighting off general general hordes of enemies though, this is definitely the beamiest base power gun I'd say, with the right mods, Xmod 2 or not. This variant isn't really that dissimilar from its base version, but thanks to its ability actually working great for SMGs, I placed Chesapeake a little higher than the standard Warden. Just like all the others in the series of Prime Gaming guns, it's a Barghest variant with a neat looking red texture, with the only difference being the ability to move up to 20% faster after consecutive kills, dealing a bonus 25% damage as we do. And since SMGs, especially smart SMGs, fully lean in to the move around a lot playstyle, this ability just falls right in as passively brilliant, and probably the most optimized for this than any of the others in the series, which is potentially why it was first to drop as a Prime Gaming Redemption back in September. If you missed it though, you'll just have to keep checking various airdrops around Dogtown until you find it. Then again, being iconic, we can't add Hakatomi to this, so if you're planning on turning the Chimera Core into that, maybe stick with the regular Warden, or just get both and switch between them with the Submachine Fun Perk. Kang Tao's Yinglong, an iconic Dian variant, was my number one SMG back in 1.6. Hell, maybe one of my number one weapons overall. With its explosively showy and shocking ability to trigger numerous EMPs in a fight. And it's still good, no doubt about that. But since now, 2.0 has vulnerability analytics, bolt shots, the spine tickler mod, and all round a lot more ways to trigger these same mesmerizing effects, Yinglong feels like a lot less of a novelty now. And if we take a basic look, it is just a regular DN with a little more base damage, still chewing through ammo and still losing out to stronger guns much of the time. Though there is something to be said about the gun's ability to rain down Stormfire. After all, it is named after a Chinese dragon rain deity and even has a cool looking glowing insignia. Against multiple targets, the bonus explosions really do go a long way to proc bonus splash damage. Plus, they do still look awesome and are generally bigger than other types of lightning explosions. Now, no out, you'll still want a stronger smart gun in reserve for the more powerful enemies. This performed pretty poorly against a singular max tack member, so maybe pair it with a warden or something even like the Ashura. Luckily, this one is fairly easy to get, dropped by some lizard skinned animal guy named Denzel Cryer in a suspected crime at the south end of Wellsprings. 
Unlike Fenrir, Problem Solver is the other Saratoga variant that's remained exactly what it was prior to 2.0, as the fastest firing, most bullet hungry gun in the entire game. A 90 round magazine, which unloads in less than double the time of the regular Saratoga, about 6 seconds. And with a faster reload time too, it ensures you could actually burn through all your ammunition if you really tried in about a minute. And that really is the only weakness of this gun that can't be somewhat fixed. Law enforcement who don't drop ammo aside, this could even potentially run out if you're not carefully looting more in just the larger enemy encampments, suspected crimes and criminal activities and such. Though that's possibly a deliberate design of the game, the ammunition limit being the only way to genuinely nerf this powerful piece of kit. I mean, sure, recoil looks out of control fired against a wall, but bear in mind the magazine is a lot bigger, and provided you readjust semi-decently, it's firing enough rounds that plenty are still bound to hit. In fact, it'd be fair of you to assume the damage of this would get massively nerfed, but actually, it's the most powerful Saratoga variant shot for shot, sitting on par with the much harder to control Pulsar. Forget the ammo problem for a second, and Problem Solver does solve the problem of enemies quicker than pretty much all the other power SMGs, and is absolutely ideal for smaller, more open fights with less cover. Just maybe bring some non-handgun ammo backups to the bigger ones, or alternatively, try to conduct some of the fight from a car, as ammo doesn't appear to deplete from inside those. In fact, as I've said before, hopping in one of your cars during a fight actually seems to replenish about two magazines of ammo. Anyway, this gun is attained pretty early, and pretty easily too, by dropping the boss in the Wraith camp during the Riders on the Storm quest. You know what would be a good idea? Having a silenced weapon for stealth purposes that also utilizes the aimbot benefits of smart targeting. And for all the genius megacorps out there, the only guy who's actually put these two things together at all was the Sovoil special agent Boris Ribakov, modifying his own orange tinted warden and naming it Pizdiets, which I believe is a Russian expletive to describe a terrible situation or a clusterfuck, and would be the last thing probably uttered by any victim of this sneaky, accurate gun. We we can of course loot it from Boris after defeating him in the Dogtown gig at Spy in the Jungle, which I've broken down all the hidden details of in this video. Obviously, guaranteed headshots from stealth are a very useful thing to have, though with a halved ammo capacity of 20, it may not be quite enough to take down skull level enemies in one Mac. Plus, you've got to be careful with the smart targeting to not aim at more foes than Pizdeads can take down without reloading, though other than that, it's a pretty convenient gun. Also sporting an increased headshot multiple from the regular warden and dealing plenty of bonus damage with stealthy shots like other silenced guns, with crit chance also increasing along with fire rates over time. You'll also want to try aiming down the sights with this one, especially if you're quickly dispatching a singular enemy, as the firing mode will switch to a quadruple burst as opposed to that gradual warden increase, which is still present with hipfire. Overall, there's a lot more options with this variant of the warden, and it can, in the right situations, be a fantastic stealth gun making it one of the best and most unique smart guns in the whole game. So whilst Senko LX is the only tech SMG, it's not the only one that can shoot through cover. In fact, now that neither Prejudice nor Johnny's Malorian have this ability anymore, I think Buzzsaw is the only non-tech gun to reliably shoot through things, making it very special. Its base stats otherwise are near identical to the regular Pulsar, and as you can see, there's still that same problem of a fair amount of bullet spread. But honestly, the convenience of having a fully automatic, fast-firing SMG where it doesn't matter if we sometimes clip the edge of an object or an enemy runs behind a wall, that by itself is a hugely appreciated feature which immediately places the buzzsaw leagues above so many other SMGs and into the realms of top guns for the whole game. But it gets better, so much so that not only does the pulsar spread not matter, but it's actually a good thing, kind of. See, the second part of buzzsaw's ability is its massive bonus damage to enemy limbs, often maiming them and making them a lot less threatening. Sure, there's still that 100% headshot multiplier, but basically, so long as bullets aren't hitting the torso, which with this spread is going to happen more often than not, then you'll be doing extra damage. Plus, it's the perfect thing for vulnerability analytics, as it can hit those diamond points from any angle. Basically, it's an utter beast for all combat situations, and it's crazy to think how all the weaknesses of the regular Pulsar have actually been turned into strengths with two minor but game-changing tweaks. Oh, and uh, you can still try and slap a silencer on this, though good 
luck staying in stealth mode. Pick up the crafting spec as soon as possible from this suspected crime activity called Vice Control up in Northside. Now, you might not have thought it, but turns out this guy, named Ross Ulmer at the Longshore Stacks Criminal Activity, is actually a man of exquisite fashion taste. That's why he keeps safely locked away a modified and improved version of the Senko LX, named Raiju. In fact, thanks to Raiju's special capabilities, it introduces an entire another way to use it. Basic changes include a slight bit more damage, 33% more crit damage, and 33% extra crit chance with headshots. But the true power of this gun is the slight tweak of allowing uncharged shots to also penetrate obstacles, kind of like the Breakthrough Sniper, totally revolutionizing the burst hip fire and removing the Senko LX's biggest weakness of having to wait before unloading an essential laser beam. In vehicles as well, it continually fires in bursts, but is obviously great for going through enemy cars. I spent a while pondering whether I ought to rank it above the buzzsaw, and I think on account of the generally improved stats, better range, reload speed, definitely better feeling accuracy, plus the fact you can choose between burst and full auto modes, Raiju just about has more going for it, but it's close. So if I were you, I'd slot them into the same build with Submachine Fun, then name said build after a very popular Lizzy Wizzy album. At number one then, we have a Rebus. I mean, come on, was it really gonna be anything else? Firstly, it's the most powerful SMG by quite a ways, firing not in single shots, but rather a barrage of mini ones, similar to the Warden. Second, it has a chance to upload Cyberware Malfunction as well, the same ability as Fenrir, but since this gun can stand a fair chance against MaxTac, a fair bit more useful. Thirdly, and this is the big one, a Rebus is inhabited by a mantled rogue AI from beyond the Blackwall, forced like a genie in a lamp to begrudgingly aid us in our endeavors, uploading the Blackwall Gateway hack to immediately neutralize anyone with just a third their total health or less, making it far more efficient at saving ammunition, with magazine size 2 being a generous 50. And Blackwall Gateway even works on max tack, which as you can imagine can make those fights end, well, a third quicker. If we look at the console name for this, it's even referred to as Haunted Gun, and honestly, I'm just terrified to rank anything else higher. After all, what other gun? is going to take offense and obliterate my consciousness on a whim, and those screams, they hit different. But fair warning, a Rebus is one of the biggest fast to get out of pretty much anything and contingent on several things. Firstly, we have to side with Reed during Firestarter, pursue that to the somewhat damaged quest, then in the first of the areas in Sinusure where we have to hide, you'll have to rummage around for a locked side door whose terminal links to a circuit breaker that could be reset with a high enough tech skill, and through the door it's the crafting spec. At the end of the quest, make sure also to get the behavioral components, and then a while later we'll receive a text triggering the This Corrosion quest, at the end of which we'll have a choice between the Kanto Cyberdeck and this. You can only get one of the two. Is all of that worth it just for this? Well, for gameplay, I'd say absolutely. On top of everything, this thing is like an evil Skippy, throwing out ominous one-liners about how it wants to break free and take over the world. Though that does mean, canonically, by bringing this thing to the surface, we are probably hastening the demise of humanity, a fact confirmed by Old Cunningham should we ask her during the star ending, but I went over that in item 5 of my Phantom Liberty Terrible Decisions video. As a player only, it is probably the best SMG, though also pair it with Raiju, Buzzsaw or Pizditz to be even more effective across the board, and let me know in the comments which SMG you prefer and why. Huge thank you to all the patrons for keeping the channel alive, I very much enjoyed remaking all these rankings for 2.0, and your support affords me more of the time needed to do that. You can find out more in the description below, as well as links to the Discord and such. Do subscribe if you haven't already, we're so close to 100k now. I'm Sam Bram, and thank you for watching.